An important tool to understand the processes within the protoplanetary disk and in the early solar system are the chemical compositions of bulk meteorites, but also the minerals within these meteorites. Now, from these we can learn something about, for example, volatile depletion, fractionation processes, and so on. To interpret the chemical compositions of meteorites and minerals, it is imperative to know something about the characteristics of the individual elements that occur in these uh, meteorites and minerals. Now, this table here summarizes the cosmochemical characteristics of the various elements. In general, there are two groups here. The one is the lithophile elements. Now, these elements occur in the silicates and in the oxides. The second group are the siderophile and the chalcophile elements. These elements occur and, of course, constitute the metal and sulfide phases in the meteorites. Now basically here on something like the y-axis, if you want, um, downwards, is something like the temperature. Now this is a particular temperature and this is one of uh, one very important concept in cosmochemistry. This is the 50% condensation temperature. Now this means that at this temperature, an ele or 50% of an element has been condensed. So for example, let's say something like 1500 Kelvin or so, 50% of aluminum condensed. It is not aluminum oxide in corundum or in any other mineral. This would be the condensation temperature of a specific phase of a specific mineral. It is just the element. So this is highly conceptual here. Um, and this is what this 50% condensation temperature means. This is always also at a certain pressure, so the 50% condensation temperature varies with uh, ambient pressure. Now then we um, discriminate four groups here. The first is the refractory elements. The refractory elements condense at a temperature above 1400 Kelvin. So these are the first to condense from a hot gas. We usually think that initially in the protoplanetary disk um, at least a certain region, region was completely evaporated, gaseous, and then this cooled down, and upon cooling, the various elements and phases started to condense. Now the important elements to remember here are aluminum, calcium, and titanium, and also the rare earth elements for the lithophile elements. Now, it's already quite um, interesting to look at these elements and try and relate these to what we see in the meteorites, in the chondrites. And these elements, of course, form um, oxides, aluminum calcium rich oxides, which means these are the elements that then occur in the calcium aluminum rich inclusions. And the minerals that are formed here, something like corundum or hipponite, galenite, and so on. So, from looking just at this, we can already make a connection to the meteorites. Now, the important um, Citrophyte elements to memorize here is maybe something like tungsten and iridium. These would form um, highly refractory nuggets that are sometimes found in meteorites. Then next in this condensation sequence, if you want, are the main components. These are called um, main components because elements like magnesium and silicon condense at these temperatures. And the temperature range here is 1400 to 1250 Kelvin. Now, magnesium and silicon are among uh, the most abundant elements in uh, the terrestrial fraction, so not uh, neglecting hydrogen and helium. So these are the most abundant elements in our solar system, together with the siderophile iron. And these are then also the three elements you should memorize for the main components for lithophile, magnesium and silicon. These then occur and condense, for example, in olivine and pyroxene. These are magnesium-rich silicates. Um, and in metal, which condenses at this temperature. Another element certainly uh, worth memorizing is nickel, which has about a factor of 10 lower abundance than iron, um, but it's also quite present, and then maybe cobalt. But the most important here are magnesium, silicon, and iron. Now then, next are the volatile elements, condensing at temperatures between 640 and 1250 Kelvin. Among these are the most important and those to memorize is manganese and sodium. So sodium condenses, for example, in, in feldspar. Of course, also potassium can 
condensed in feldspar, but the abundance is, is much lower. And also, of course, um, calcium, which feldspar is condensing as well, and first because it has the highest condensation temperature, but this would then be with calcium, this would condense at uh, some higher temperature here, but it's not too critical for, for this general concept here. Now for the siderophyte and chalcophyte elements, of course, now sulfur is the most important element here, which then forms the sulfides. And also copper is an element um, interesting to remember here. Finally, finally, the highly volatile elements condense at 50% condensation temperatures below 640 Kelvin. Here, for example, the noble gases condense, but also um, oxygen and hydrogen and, and, and carbon. So this would form then uh, water, for example, carbonates, something like that. And for the siderophyte elements, the most important is lead, as this is a very important element for um, chronology. And it's quite important to know that this is a highly volatile element because this might easily disturb a chronometer. Now interesting here as well is um, oxygen, which is here. Now oxygen is a highly volatile element. However, oxygen condenses at the highest temperatures as well, together with aluminum forming corundum. So this means that when we look at these cosmochemical characteristics, this gives us a very good idea, but it does mean that it directly relates to um, a condensation sequence, because oxygen, although highly volatile and should, for example, condense at very low temperatures, it already condenses at the highest temperatures together with refractory elements. Um, a similar second example might be manganese that also condenses within olivine at uh, higher temperatures already than its uh, condensation temperatures. And this all shows how we can immediately relate um, this kind of table here to what we observe in meteorites. So we see that the high the refractory phases are the calcium aluminum rich occlusions, the main components are in the olivine pyroxene and so on. And this is why this concept here is of such high importance. And this is why it's important to, to remember this concept and sufficient to remember those elements that I just um, pointed out a little bit here. So this is the cosmochemical characteristics of the elements.